This is going to be a really short video just to show you what um, Magic Lantern can do with the Canon 60D to allow you to access a few more features using a basic water housing such as the Aquatec CR60. This is the 60D with the Tokina 10-17mm fisheye lens. This is the back plate for the CR60 housing. As you can see, uh, there's one button there and it matches up with the live view button on the back of the 60D. Um, you've also got control to the top dial and the shutter. Um, they're the three controls you have on this housing. Uh, so it's a basic model, don't get too much control. In the past I've shot in uh, shutter priority mode um, because you've only got control of that one item so you want the, com the uh, camera to take care of everything else. So these are the couple of scripts I've come up with. You need a recent version of uh, a nightly build of Magic Lantern which has access to the Pico C scripting. So I won't go into detail on Magic Lantern, you can find out more about that on the blog post on uh, learningsurfphotography.com. But if you hit the rubbish, rubbish bin icon, you can then scroll across to scripts. These are all sample scripts, these last two are the ones I've made. One's called Focus with LV Button. This, uh, as you can see, it's quite a simple script. I'm going to put all of the, these scripts up on the learningsurfphotography.com blog post so you can download them or just copy and paste them from there. Uh, you get to choose what focus duration. What we're going to do is use this button, which is what we've got access to from the housing, to auto focus the camera. Um, take the focus away from the shutter button so it's back focus using the live view button. So let's run the script. So there we go. I can take a photo and if I press that button it's going to focus. There you go, that Tokina lens cap is pretty much in focus. Then if I point it up, that's a cricket back grip there. As you can see, the grip's in focus and the Tokina thing isn't. Press it again, and hopefully it will find focus on the lens cap again. So it's useful for uh, shooting above water um, and then hitting the back focus button when you're underwater to focus closer. So you've got a, with your dome port, you focus on the virtual image. So you're allowed to, you can shoot uh, clear photos or in focus photos above and below water in the same session and all you need is access to this one live view button instead of uh, the back focus button that you'd normally use which is this one just here. Uh, so that's one script I've got. To exit the script you just press the set button and then again so you can't exit the script whilst it's in the housing at the moment. Um, something I might work on but at the moment it's just one or the other. So let's go and try the other one. This is manual control also the live view button. Uh, this is the duration for the pause. I'm going to set it to two seconds. The default's three. I find that's pretty good. Again, a really simple script, um, but all of it will be on learningsurfphotography.com. Hit run script. So now uh, your camera's in the housing. You've only got access to these few controls. So if I take a photo, let's start the script. Let's hit that one. So you see the aperture is selected and then it goes to ISO, then back to aperture. That's two seconds it keeps on each one. So uh, right now I can change the aperture. Um, if I let it time out for a second, it's gonna go back to the default um, use of the top dial in manual mode, which is the shutter speed. So there you go, that's timed out. So now, remember I've got access to this in the housing as well. Now I'm changing the shutter speed, that's great. So when I wanna adjust the aperture, hit the live view button once, there you go change ISO, I can change that as well, back to aperture and then if you want to come out of that a bit quicker you can just hit the button and take a photo straight away, obviously pretty dark. So if you wanted to move down to these ones further down, uh, it's a bit of a pain, I couldn't think of a, of a much better way of doing this but this is how I achieve it so far, hit the button, wait for it to go to ISO and then half press or take a photo, then the next time you press the live view button, it starts on ISO and then goes to your exposure comp compensation. And I've changed that a little bit so I want to get rid of that. Let's try that again. There we go. And if I half press on that one and then press the live view button again, it'll go on to the uh, next setting along. And you can scroll through the whole thing like that, it's a bit of a pain, I'm not sure which ones you want to adjust really, so I've kept it, that's why I've left it up here. So. You, uh, you, the default is going to be shutter speed at any point, then you press the button you get aperture and ISO. 
So the main, the three main ones, obviously, um, you can shuffle between them fairly quickly in the water, do your little adjustments that you need to do, and then get back to shooting. Um, so basically, yeah, it just allows you to use the basic housing CR60 or any housing which has a live view, um, access to the live view button when you're in the housing, and this top dial. Um, should work with any camera that runs Magic Lantern, any of the latest Magic Lanterns at least, so 60D is the obvious choice in this housing. Um, just should let you get a bit more out of that housing, test out a few things. Uh, if you do want to upgrade, then you'll know then if you really use that back button focus much. Um, so you can get a dedicated button put on the housing if you need to, if you're upgrading to a 7D perhaps. Um, and if you start using the manual features a lot, then you'll know that you want to go for a, a much, well, a more expensive housing which is fully featured and has all the buttons there for you to do that straight away. Uh, so check out learningsurfphotography.com. All the scripts and everything are on there. A little how-to, uh, quite a detailed post on why I did it. Um, so you can find out a lot more, learningsurfphotography.com.